What is going on, YouTube people? Northeast Ohio Cards and Comics here today to talk a little MBA action. I haven't seen many people talk about this yet, but most of the MBA market is in a little bit of a backslide. If you go from the start of the season through today, so a little over two weeks, there's a lot of stuff trending slightly downwards. Some big time downwards, depending on the player. Obviously, you know, John Morant way up, Miles Bridges way up, you know, Jordan Poole way up. Some other guys too, don't get me wrong. You know, guys have definitely gone up. But most star players pretty much across the board have stayed slightly flat if they're lucky to down 10 to 20 to 30% in some cases, depending on the player. We're going to run through a bunch of them today in the wonderful market movers. Uh, link in the description down below, along with 20% off coupon code. But that's what we're going to talk about today. So I, I guess we'll start with this. Am I concerned about this? No. Uh, I kind of said this was going to happen. Uh, you know, prices, we've seen, first off, we've seen this happen in pretty much every sport in the last calendar. Since I've been making content, we've seen this happen every single time. The season starts. Everyone's all jazzed up. Some players play out of mind and their card prices escalate because they were undervalued going into the season based off their play. Expectations were lower. Uh, John Morant was probably just slightly mispriced and he also happened to play out of his damn mind. Miles Bridges, no one was looking at Miles Bridges. You know, it's just... No, you know, yeah, I'm sure people were looking at Miles Bridges, but no one was really talking about Miles Bridges. His stuff was dirt cheap. And then he blew up to start the season. His stuff went crazy. Jordan Poole got a little pump before the season. He's played up and down as the seasons began. Uh, Nikhil Alexander Walker, big pump to begin the season. And now he's down. He's way down, actually. Uh, Kevin Porter Jr., guys like that, way down. Because they had massive expectations set for them. Prior to the season starting, actual NBA games got played, and all of a sudden people were like, oh wait, that guy's really not that good. Or, they're just not living up to the insane amount of hype that we put on these guys. Perfect example of that is Luka and Trey. Luka is having a perfectly fine NBA season. He is not playing out of his mind like John Moran is. The Mavericks are a little sus right now. And his card prices are starting to trend downwards. Trey Young, the Hawks, they look good. He's played pretty good. He has not played out of his mind good. He's not dropping 30 to 40 points a night every single night, putting up massive stats all over SportsCenter, whatever, all over Twitter. But the Hawks are playing well. He's playing good NBA basketball, not scoring 30 to 40, 30 to 40 a night. Uh, and his stuff is trending down and we see this happen time and time again uh let's go back to baseball you know baseball season started soto acuna tatis were all sky high the season started all of them immediately started backsliding on their prices from the preseason highs acuna got hot his prices went way up. Tatis got hot, then got hurt, then got hot again. His yo-yoed around a little bit and then eventually settled in, but we saw the same thing happen there. His stuff spiked way up when he signed the extension, came down, went right back up when he got super hot, came down because he got hurt, rinse, repeat. Um, Soto basically went down pretty much the entire season, bought, flattened out, and then went got a nice spike at the end of the season. When he started playing extremely like extraordinarily well, you know, he got hot essentially. And that's what happens right now in the NBA football. Same way. Uh, we've seen Justin Herbert prices bounce all around. You know, he starts off the season in an elevated price. They start fine, perfectly fine. You could almost use the same thing for Josh Allen too. start perfectly fine. They're winning games, but neither one of them were like the main reason behind the wins. Then all of a sudden, you know, Herbert beats the Chiefs. His stuff skyrockets. Then, you know, two, three weeks go by. He's 
playing fine. They had a bye week mixed in, you know, some odds and ends of stuff. His stuff's sliding back down again. Josh Allen was the same way. You know, he had a big win, put up big numbers. I forget which game that was. His stuff went right back up again. And then, you know, they've been fine. Uh, but he hasn't been playing like, oh, my God, I'm the best player on earth. His stuff sliding back down again. Uh, Mahomes, obvious, but he's been a major disappointment. Um, Baker Mayfield down, but obviously major disappointment. It's more the guys that from the outside looking in appears that they're they're playing fine. Their team's winning, you know, regardless of sport. And their card people question why are the card price is going down. There's a lot of cards, a lot of guys, and the focus gets pinpointed on the ones that are super hot, at least in the short term. Uh, you know, this is why we always say, you know, they let you buy them back. You can move off this stuff at the beginning of the season and potentially buy it back cheaper in season. Now, for John Morant, Miles Bridges, that was not the case. For a lot of other guys, that does appear to be the case again this year. Now, I get it. Not everyone wants to play the microtransaction game. Perfectly fine. I didn't sell off my entire collection on October 19th when the NBA season started. I have things set aside that I view as more long-term holds with the ability to flip in the short term. Luca Opticalos, Trey Young stuff. Some of the Trey Young silvers that I bought, I'm slightly down on right now. I'm okay with that because I believe in Trey for the long term. Now, yes, could I have sold them and could I have bought them back? Sure, I could have. Uh, I probably would have washed out because they didn't go up enough to make enough to cover all the various fees or whatever. Now, I could have traded them for other stuff. And in fact, I did trade one. Uh, I included one in a deal for a Luca Opticalo. But those sorts of players, I definitely believe in throughout the season. So I am willing to ride the waves a little bit on those guys. Um, Luca is a tricky one this year because the Mavs seem like they're going to be a mess. Uh, and I think there's going to be some interesting potential buying opportunities on Luka in season. The Mavs are still kind of winning, but they really haven't played anybody. I don't know. I, I am perplexed on what to do with the Mavs. I love Luka. I do think he's the future of the league. But I definitely have concerns about the Mavericks in the short term and how they get to even a Western Conference final level. Now, the West actually seems more wide open than the East. That's kind of the other thing that's been weird that's going on. The teams at the top of the East don't have sexy players. The Bulls look amazing. And, you know, Zach Levine stuff's slightly up. But most people, there's just not a big hobby buzz for Zach Levine cards. The Heat look unstoppable. Tyler Hero stuff's going crazy. Jimmy Butler stuff is just kind of like whatever. No one seems to really care about Jimmy Butler. And he's almost playing at an MVP level. In the West, the Lakers have major injury concerns. I think they're going to limp along all season and just kind of eke their way into the playoffs. Uh, LeBron's hurt again with some sort of abdominal issue. He's going to miss some time. His stuff's trending down. Uh, Utah looks good, but no one cares about the Jazz. Uh, they never do until the playoffs, and even then, that's a stretch. So Donovan Mitchell stuff is struggling, even though the Jazz are playing really well, because just Mitchell just does not get the hobby buzz. You know. It's not just so much a player playing well. It's how much oomph a player has as well. I love Donovan Mitchell. I have some of his cards. So let's go ahead and dive into some numbers. They're pretty eye-opening, honestly. Uh, let's look at some of these players. So first up, we have some examples of guys going up. Pretty obvious, John Moran. And for the purposes of this, I tried to pull PSA 10 silver base uh, and see PSA 10 silvers and bases and nines. What I was trying to spit out there. Uh, just so we could kind of see, you know, is everything moving up? You know, there's, sometimes there's a little bit of differences, but just to kind of give us a little bigger sample size too. So this is Ja, uh, base and silvers. You can see green across the board, not surprising. His PSA 9 is actually flat, and I ran these all from exactly the first day of the NBA season, October 19th. That was a Tuesday night doubleheader. Well, everything that we're going to look at started there and goes through. Uh, I'm recording this Thursday afternoon. So data would be early Thursday morning. Silver up 15%, base prism up 18%, uh, and silver PSA 9 up 9%. And once again, this is from the start of the season. If you go from the summer, these numbers would look a lot more. But that shows you even in season uh, how little of a jump that he's actually seen since the season started. 
Uh, Tyler Hero, one of the guys that we mentioned earlier in the round. I'm not going to go over everyone going hot. I just wanted to kind of set a baseline here. Uh, his base PSA 9 is up 5%. His silver is up 35% PSA 9. PSA 10 silver is up 20%. Base is up 35%. Um, little variance here on which days had ending sales and which didn't. So that throws a little bit of stuff in, um, and the smaller sample size throws some stuff in as well, but decent amount of sales here. I mean, actually quite a few sales, uh, only 19 on the PSA 10, but a lot on the base anyway. Tyler Hero stuff way up playing great. As we mentioned, heat playing great. Trey Young. Hawks look fine. Trey Young's been playing fine, putting up decent numbers, uh, you know, once again, as we, we talked about earlier in the video, he's not dropping 40 a night or anything crazy like that. And his stuff is slowly trickling down. PSA 10 only down 3%, not crazy, but you can see every, all his stuff is in the red. PSA 9 base down 7%. PSA 9 silver down 20% at 315. And PSA 10 base down 22. So right now, Trey Young is $500 cheaper than John Morant. I'm sorry, 300, 300-ish dollars cheaper than John Morant. I love John Morant. Do not get me wrong. Trey Young has a legitimate chance to go to the Eastern Conference Finals. As much as I love Trey John Morant, I don't believe Ja has a chance to go to the Western Conference Finals. So there are going to be some interesting buying opportunities here shortly in season, I believe, for some of these NBA stars that you believe in. Now, you're obviously gambling. All this is gambling. Uh, but you're gambling on, you know, a strong second, not even second half is too strong of a word to say at this point in time in the season, strong rest of the season uh, with a playoff run mixed in. But as the focus gets taken off these guys, there are going to be buying opportunities. Some of these guys that we talk about today, I don't know which ones, it's anyone's guess. We're going to look at charts and graphs probably in April and go, oh my God, why wasn't I buying this guy back at Thanksgiving? Look at where his stuff's at now. You know, Trey Young could be one of them. I don't know. You know, we'll find out as the season progresses. But moving right along, Luca, uh, Prism Base PSA nine down ten percent. Silver Prism PSA nine down thirty percent. PSA ten Silver down twenty two percent, under five k now, uh, and this down to eleven hundred. And then Base Prism down eight percent. This is down to se under seven hundred bucks now for a Luca base prism. You know, we, we talked about the Mavs at length earlier in this video. Um, I believe in Luca in the long, long term. In the short term, it's going to be an up and down ride. Uh, he also, once again, he's putting up good numbers across the board, but he I don't think he has a 30 point game yet, or if he has a 30 point game, it's just barely. Um, the Mavs look... I, like I said, I'm concerned. I have major concerns about the Mavericks as a team. Love the player, concerns about the team. Uh, Michael Porter Jr., this is one people are just taking a bath on. Um, and his actually bounced back up a little bit. You can see his PSA 10 actually got, this is a silver, got all the way down to 432. Has actually rallied back the last couple of days to get back to 500, but this is all the way down to almost 400 bucks. So at present, it's only down 20%. For a hot minute out there, it was down a lot more. He's having a dreadful season. His minutes are getting crunched. He's playing like 26 to 28 minutes a game. He hasn't been shooting very well. Uh, that Denver team is kind of deep, so they have a lot of interchangeable parts. So the second he does something dumb on defense, they just sub him out. Uh, base prison PSA 10 is down 31%, under 100 bucks. Silver 9 is down 10%, and PSA 9 is down 23%. Uh, all the way down to 30 bucks now for a PSA 9 base Porter Jr., He's another one. You know, if this got cheap enough, he could easily get hot and it bounce back, really any of these guys. But I don't know that Porter Jr. is one that I'm willing to take the risk on. And I like Porter Jr. as a player. At least I did. He just, I don't know where his head's at this year. Zion, the much ballyhooed, much talked about Zion. Uh, once again, since the season started, PSA 10 silver down 20% to $2,400. I don't remember a time that a Zion Silver Prism was $2,400. I'd have to look to see if it's ever been that cheap before. Uh, you might go back quite a while before you find it selling this cheap. PSA 9 Silver down to $600. PSA 9 Base down to $95. And a PSA 10 Base is down to $300, down 20% and 16% on the 9. 
Um, so basically now 20% across the board in just the first two weeks of the season. And I honestly, the video leaked out of him working out. I, I said, you know, uh, I didn't, I didn't expect to see him until after Thanksgiving was my preseason take. I don't know that we see him before Christmas, to be quite honest. And I think his stuff's going to continue to trend down. And here's the pro here's the additional problem with this. When he comes back, there is no chance in hell they're playing him full minutes. So his stat lines are not going to look great. He's going to be limited in minutes. He's probably still going to be a little out of shape. So he's still not going to look that good. So even his first couple of games back, there's a real chance that there's even more potential panic selling in there. And for me with Zion, it's never been about the talent. The guy is an absolute beast when he's on the court. The problem is him actually staying on the court. That's where it gets tricky with Zion. But as an actual NBA player, if you told me he had perfect health and was going to play 15 years in the league with no injuries and play, you know, let's say 72 game, or I'm sorry, like 60 games a season, 65 games a season, sign me up. But I just don't see that happening. He's breaking down already in his second NBA season. Um, that just scares the hell out of me from a, a guy that I want to put money in, especially given his price point. It's not like you're getting in Zion on the cheap. Now, someone's probably going to make money buying a Zion dip here shortly if that silver prism gets under 2K or something like that. Uh, and he comes back and, you know, after a couple weeks, he's look, starting to look like himself again. There's probably going to be a flip potential there. But it's going to be a dangerous game because you don't know where the bottom is and you don't know where it's going to get bounced back to. And there's also just a lot of risk. You know, what if he gets re-injured? The Pelicans are god awful. What if they just shut him down for the year? I'm not saying that's going to happen, but if he comes back and has any sort of minor setback and they're still in like dead last in the West, what if they just go, uh, yeah, he's going to recover for the rest of the season. Uh, see you next year. It could happen. It really could happen. Donovan Mitchell talked about the Jazz earlier. They're the best team in the Western Conference right now. Nobody cares. PSA 10, Silver Prism down 10%. Base Prism is down 5%. Uh, the silver prism is up 26%. I'm guessing there was just a very low sale right when this happened to run uh, that maybe skewed these numbers a little bit because that seems like a little bit of an outlier. Uh, base PSA 9 down 50%, possibly same thing going on there. Though actually, no, that does match up with the with the PSA 10 in regards to the multiplier for the most part. Uh, but yeah, Mitchell just kind of puttering along here, but he's at 1K for his silver prism. <sighs> If they could ever just stay healthy and make a deep playoff run, I say this every year, uh, this is going to get to a steal if it keeps going lower. One of my commenters mentioned about if it gets to 1K, I'm buying. Well, there it is. 1K. Get the get the PayPal wallet out. Uh, De'Aaron Fox. Now, this one is ugly. Uh, De'Aaron Fox has not looked good this season at all. I don't know if he wants out of Sacramento. I mean, who doesn't want out of Sacramento, but... Um, I don't know if he wants out of Sacramento or what. If they were smart, I would look to deal him. Uh, Tyrese Halliburton, Davion Mitchell are both really good, though. Halliburton's been struggling this year quite a bit, but their first-round pick this year, Davion Mitchell, looks like a keeper. He looks real good. I don't know if he's going to put up big offensive numbers, but he is a really, really good defender. And they could just let those two lead the backcourt and flip Fox for probably a lot. Um I would love to see Fox on an actual competitive NBA team, not the Kings. I'm like, what, once again, the Kings do look a little better this year, but still. Uh, his card prices are just getting hammered. PSA 10 silver down 40%. Last one sold at $420. PSA 9 is down 20% at $90. PSA 10 is down to $90 on his base. That's a 17 base. That's not super high pop. PSA 9 down to $24, 32% decrease, 25% decrease on the PSA 10 base. So De'Aaron Fox stuff just getting absolutely hammered. Um, this silver is intriguing if this keeps going down, sub $400 for that. You're probably going to have to wait for an auction. No one's going to sell it to you at that price at a bin, best, most likely. Uh, it's only pop 500 so happy hunting on that one. Kevin Porter Jr., KPJ. Uh, I sold my last KPJ Silver Prism just in the nick of time. Um, he was one, you know, high upside, high risk. Big reward, big loss potential. Silver Prism down 
percent, two hundred and sixty bucks. It's down. Uh, look at this chart. Do 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 do. Uh, like a cliff face that thing fell off of. Uh, in fact, one actually sold for one eighty seven. Wow, for a PSA ten. Next one did two hundred. This dropped. This is how. Look at how fast this dropped. It was. 470 on 1028, 425 on 1025, then it went to 367. Next day it goes to 187, and the day after that it's 207. I mean, just lightning fast, and it's across the board. Uh, as PSA 9 silver is down 60%, PSA 10 base is down 50%, PSA 9 base is down 46%, PSA 10 base is at 50 bucks right now. Yikes. Yikes. 200 bucks for the silver 10. Once again, you know, this, you know, these prices get so low, it becomes interesting again, because we all know KPJ can get hot. It's just a matter of when I had one, I just sold it uh, a week before the Dallas show. Uh, someone reached out to me uh, and wanted to purchase it. So I, I sold it and shipped it off. So got rid of that one just in the nick of time. Uh, let's talk about, you know, Actual established players in the league, LeBron, KD, Giannis, what's their stuff doing? LeBron's stuff is dipping. Uh, like we talked about at the beginning of the video, Lakers, pretty banged up. LeBron, all these on and off injuries. Guy's in his 19th year. Now, he has ultra long-term value for sure. Um, his stuff's always going to maintain some level of value. It's not like he's going to crash to zero or anything. But the lower end stuff of him has been getting hurt the hardest. His PSA 10 tops Chrome uh, is down 9% since the season started, under 1,500, 14, 6. I haven't seen, I'd have to double check. I haven't seen it this low in a really long time. PSA 9, down 20%, down to $3,500 for PSA 9. That got way down there in a hurry. Uh, and then PSA 8 down to 1600. Uh, I believe one sold early this morning uh at around 1700. So it might not be down a full 20%, but it's it's still in that neck of that 16 1800 dollar range on a PSA 8. I bought mine in the summer for what I thought was a low price at I think I paid 2 or 2100 for that. Maybe I think it was 2100 with taxes and everything so I thought on eBay. Um I could be slightly off on that, but it's right in that neck of the woods. I could I could double check my collection, but I think it's right around twenty one hundred bucks. I paid for mine, so I'm I'm down about two three hundred bucks on that card. I'm fine with that because when I bought that card, I didn't buy it to quick flip it. Uh, that being said, I would flip it into a nine, and maybe now's the opportunity with the nines dipping in price to move the eight, um, which is not down as much as the nine, uh, and throw in a little bit of cash and get that done. But the trick is is finding someone willing to move at this comp. You might have to wait out an eBay auction on that. Moving along, a couple more guys to talk about. Giannis. PSA 10, PSA 9, Prism, base. I didn't look at Silvers here. They're super low pop. They don't sell very often. His stuff's staying relatively stable. His base is down 10% or 8% on the 10, up actually slightly on the 9. Um, Giannis has been playing really good. The Bucks do look really good, even though they're a little banged up and have COVID issues and a bunch of other shenanigans. But Giannis is putting up astronomically good numbers this year. Uh, I don't know if he's going to be in the running for an MVP. It's way too soon to say for that. But he looks really, really good. The Bucks look really, really good. Um, to me, it's them and the Heat. And I guess I have to say the Bulls in the East right now because the Nets look very beatable. And speaking of the Nets, we'll close out with KD. Tops Chrome. KD, uh, PSA 10 up slightly, 5% to just under 5K. PSA 9 down slightly, down 15%, down to around 1,000. This thing's been floating around $1,000 for months. Goes right under, goes up to 1,100, 1,200, goes back down to 1,000, back to 1,100, back to 1,200. It, it bounces all over hell. So that, you know, it just, for whatever reason, doesn't want to see the move off that number. But the Nets look very beatable. You know, Harden doesn't look himself. KD looks really good. KD's playing out of his mind as well. No Kyrie, at least for now. There's rumors maybe January 1st when the new mayor takes over that they would look at changing that restriction and maybe he could return the play. But the Nets definitely need him. That is for sure. So uh, that's the list. Those are the players. Uh, what are you guys and girls seeing in the NBA market? Are you seeing the same thing I am with it? I mean, obviously, you know, this is the data is the data. 
Uh, but I'm and there's plenty of other players I could have pulled going down. There's plenty of more I could have pulled for examples going up. But in general, most of the NBA market seems to be trending downwards, at least slightly. It's not crashing. I mean, some players, KPJ, uh, I didn't pull Nikhil Alexander Walker. His would look really ugly if we looked at his, those sorts of guys. Um, those pet projects like that really need to just take the money when the profit is there. Guys like Luca, Trey, if you want to ride the roller coaster with them, I completely get it because I'm doing that myself. But I sold off my KPJ. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I got rid of that before the season started. Um, just because I knew. And it could have gone up. It could have been a six, $700 card if he played well. He didn't. Uh, it went down. Those are the risks that I'm willing to take. I would rather take the profit that I have in hand versus the hopes and dreams of what it could be or the nightmares of what it could be, depending on the player and the situation. Because um, more often than not, most of this stuff's going to go down. That's that's kind of what you always got to keep in the back of your head. So uh, that's all I have for you guys and girls today. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, this video is going up Friday morning. So by the time you're watching this, I'm probably trying to finish up my work day uh, to make the trip to ship Shawana. I will be at the trade night on Friday night and the show most of the day on Saturday. So if you see me, say hi. Catch you guys and girls on the next one. Peace.